Hello everyone, this is Sinatra from the Reserve Team and welcome to the second episode of the Protocol Revamp Flash Course. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the use cases of RSR and especially how it's used to ensure reserve stablecoins. First of all, if you didn't know yet, Reserve Rights or RSR is the secondary token in the Reserve Protocol and it has two main purposes. It is used to ensure reserve stablecoins, or how we call them, R tokens. And it is also used to govern those reserve stablecoins. Now, in this episode, I will be focusing on the insurance part, and in the next, I will be talking about the governance. First, let's take a look at where RSR insurance is positioned in the general reserve ecosystem. Here you can see our customers, which is the first layer. Up to now, our only customers were the Reserve App customers. However, with the new stablecoin that we will be releasing on Mainnet, we will also be targeting DeFi or crypto users. So these are our customers. And these customers, they rely on the R token platform that we discussed in the first episode of this uh, series. The R token platform basically is a platform that generates uh, multiple stable coins, which can then be used by our customers. And for the reserve app customers, that means uh, being able to save money at a stable value uh, and being able to uh, purchase goods or services through the app with a stable coin. For the DeFi crypto users, uh, that means, uh, for example, de-risking from volatile crypto trading through a stable coin, or it could mean generating some extra APY um, on DeFi protocols. Now the RSR insurance can be positioned below that because what it really does is it supports the R2 platform to make sure that it does uh, what it needs to do and that it keeps doing what it needs to do and that it uh, keeps uh, safe to use it. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what that means in the next slide. Let's imagine a hypothetical situation um, for that new stablecoin that we will be releasing on mainnet. I'm still calling it RSX because we haven't defined the actual name yet. Um, so keep in mind, this is a placeholder, um, but let's look at uh, a situation with that stablecoin. Let's imagine a situation where it has a circulating supply of 300 million and where it's backed by uh, three assets, one third each. That would mean that it has, uh, these are just examples, by the way, uh, one third AUSDC, 100 million, one third USDC, uh, USDC, and one third curve USDC. Now, keep in mind, this is actually a bad example because we wouldn't actually want a stablecoin backed by three of the same uh, variations of, of stablecoins. So it would be more AUSDC, CDI, perhaps, and curve uh, true USD, something like that. Anyway, it's just an example. So basically, it is backed by three collateral tokens, 100 million each. This system would work uh, okay up to a certain point. So for now, it might work. But then you can imagine, well, what if what would happen if something bad happens to these protocol tokens or these protocols? Something like a hack causing these tokens to lose value or a smart contract bug which is something that has happened in the past and could also happen in this case. If we didn't have a solution for that, then that would cause serious damage for the RSX holders, so people that rely on that stable, because that stable coin could be pegged from, its, from what it's pegged to. And so we think this, this solution um, isn't the right solution in the long term. We think we need some kind of insurance mechanism. And that is where the RSR insurance comes in. So this stablecoin will be insured by RSR stakers. What does that mean exactly? Well, first of all, it's very um, interesting to note that uh, a cool feature about this setup is that this stablecoin will automatically generate yield. And I'm not going to go into detail of how the protocol or this R token generates yield, but I am going to um, uh, add a link to the YouTube description in case you want to read up on that. It's too elaborate to explain for me now in this short video, uh, but it might be interesting for some of you. Basically, some money is being generated with this setup. Now, what do we do with that money? Well, first of all, we share a bit of that money with the RSX holders, so the holders of that stablecoin. 
And what's so cool about that is that those holders, they don't need to stake their token. They don't need to lock up their token. They can just keep the, the stable coin in their wallet and automatically some yield will be generated. So they'll just see their money growing and growing based on that shared yield. We also will be sharing some of that yield with the RSR insurers, which makes sense because otherwise, if we wouldn't incentivize the RSR holders then to, to stake, then no one would stake, right? So you need some kind of um, uh, incentivization to, uh, to stake. And so what that means is that if you choose to insure a stablecoin, a reserve stablecoin, then you will get a continuous stream of income. What does that mean exactly for the RSR stakers? Because they will get some income, but of course they also have a role to, to, uh, to play as the actual insurer. And so here's an animation that shows exactly what that means. So you can see by the green arrows that the RSR insurance get some uh, continuous yield that is being shared from that uh, pool of yield. And then once in the blue moon, they might have to pay up some of that yield to cover up certain losses in the collateral plates. So let's say that uh, uh, a protocol gets hacked or a bug uh, uh, happens in the smart contract, then uh, the RSR stakers will share some of the profits that they've made with these collateral tokens, just to make sure that the peg for the stablecoin can be remained. Now, I think it's very important to know here uh, that we don't expect this to happen. Uh, often or even at all. Um, we call this a black swan event, like a hack or a, or a bug in a smart contract, um, but it can happen. And we do need to have a solution in place in case it happens. Um, but again, we don't think it will happen a lot. Um, it could also never happen. Uh, I, I, I wanna make that clear. It's not like you have to uh, share a lot of the uh, generated uh, profits, at least in theory. I mean, if uh, if the landscape continues to look like what it is now. So let's look at that from another perspective. Um, again, some yield is being generated by the R token and it's being shared with the RSR stakers, um, causing them to generate some yield. I'm gonna let the animation run again. So some money is being generated and then maybe in a black swan event or in once every blue moon, the RSR stakers have to pay up part of their profits and share with, with the insurance fund to make sure that the peg for the stable can be remained. Now, a logical last question would be, well, what does that really mean for me as an RSR staker? What is my APY going to be? How much money am I actually going to make? And the answer is we won't be working with a fixed APY. The APY will be dynamic based on a few parameters. The first parameter, well, parameters or variables, I should say. The first variable is how much yield is being generated by an R token. And that really comes down to how popular is the R token. The more people that adopt an R token or a reserve stablecoin, the more money that R token will be able to generate. Um, so as you can see, as this pile of money grows in the animation, then the profit for the RSR stakers automatically also grows, at least in theory. The second variable is how many RSR stakers are already staking on that R token. Because let's look at a hypothetical situation where one R token generates 100 million in uh, yield. Well, if there's one RSR staker on that pool, then the full uh, 100 million for RSR stakers will be uh, going to that one staker. Imagine then a second RSR staker joining that pool then the 100 million that gets generated for those RSR stakers will have to be divided by two. And so each of those RSR stakers will then receive 50 million in profits or in revenue. I hope this was somewhat clear. Keep in mind that uh, what I've shown you here is really the high level explanation of RSR staking. There's a, a, a lot more to it, like the actual mechanics, how does that actually work, what gets done with that RSR and that kind of stuff. Um, but um, I chose to keep the video as short as possible just to give a high level uh, explanation. If you want a more detailed explanation, please check the YouTube description with a link to our documentation that shows you exactly how it all works. This was episode two. I really hope it was valuable to you. 
If you have any questions about this video, please contact us on these social media channels or send me a DM uh, directly. And uh, in the next episode, again, I will be talking about how RSR will be used for governance of reserve stablecoins. Thank you so much for watching.